a lock which allows us to get to a service point. So we have filled up the tank using our aqua roller by walking back to the service point that is the other side of the other lock closure and we have got two full aqua rollers on top of that. We bought another uh, aqua roll because we thought this could be a problem and now we're going to see how long we can go if we can survive without getting to a service point before the next lock opens. This all means that we're actually in a lock stoppage sandwich and not only that the weather forecast has predicted an arctic blast to head our way this week so we're going to have a couple of challenges to face. Our water tank holds 500 litres. It's not the biggest water tank on a boat, um, but it's not the smallest either. But we think moving to get closer to the lock closure ahead gives us a good position to get through when it opens. So we're heading to Barliston. Starlings are in full voice this morning. So this is the first lock of four locks in a flight called the Meaford flight. Right. The original canal used to veer off to the left hand side where this first lock is and Seth and I had a little explore where the old canal used to be and I found some amazing examples of jelly ear. Look at the size of these flappy ears. They're like elephant ears, elephant jelly ears. Look, the woodland here is a real listening woodland because there are ears everywhere. There's over 70 locks and there are five tunnels along Brindley's Trent and Mersey Canal. And when it opened in 1777, it became the biggest ever civil engineering project that England had seen at the time. So many sparrows, it's gorgeous. But Brindley died sadly in 1772, so he never got to see his canal finished. Going to set the next lock. This lock is actually its own little island, and that's because it's where the old canal joins up with the new canal. There's a sign on the lock gate there, which basically says not to use this. Instead, I just went round the back, round the back of the bridge. Right, into the last lock. Of course, narrow canals and narrower locks meant a quicker delivery of goods. And the Trent and Mersey carried iron, coal, timber, and of course, pottery. In fact, Josiah Wedgwood championed this canal because he believed his pottery would travel in one piece by water much better compared to the roads in those days. But then by the end of Feb, they've all flown back to Scandinavia. These are the sort of things I like doing in January. January and Feb can be quite dark months. Christmas is over. 
and spring hasn't sprung yet and it can be cold and grey so I like to look out for things like that things like the first snow drops any colour any colour in the hedges any colour in the grass and birds that come and visit just before they go back so waxwing love to see waxwing Salute you, magpie. Please don't bring me sorrow. This bridge is appropriately named Turnover Bridge and it's Bridge 100 on the Trent and Mersey Canal. The towpath along this part of the Trent and Mersey Canal is unbelievable. For it to be like that in January, compared to some towpaths on the system, it's just so refreshing, it's so lovely to walk along. Stafford Borough Council, Staffordshire County Council and the Canal River Trust worked in partnership in 2013 to improve this towpath. Before that it looked like this and having a good quality towpath makes such a difference to boaters in the wet and soggy months. So I think behind the trees on the right hand side there's a one stop shop. I'm going to nip in there. As soon as I've popped into the shop we're going to find somewhere to moor close by and that's because if we have got an arctic freeze on the way and because we're not near a service point now being within walking distance of a shop is going to be quite handy. Milk, kindling and bread. Done. All the boaters that you can see on the left hand side here are in exactly the same position as us. They won't be able to get to a service point now for at least two weeks. And it also means that the fuel boat can't get into this stretch either, so that's something to really bear in mind. But all we can do is find somewhere to moor and just see what the winter throws at us next. And I'm sure we will get through it and I'm sure we'll learn some good lessons as well. Both sides. Lots of solar if the sun comes out. And horses. This is the perfect spot to moor. We've got lots of solar because we are expected to have very clear blue skies and sun. That's why it's going to be so cold. And also the internet is good and there's some really exciting places to explore very close by to the boat. There's an arctic blast on the way. So I'm just enjoying this moment where I can have the duck hatch open and watch these crooks. These crazy calendar geese. They're hilarious. Wow. That one did a roly poly. Oh, oh. oh. Trenton Gardens, designed by Lancelot Capability Brown in 1759, home to a small family of recently reintroduced beavers, and where the magnificent fairy wire art of Robin White can be found. K 
Capability Brown Gardens often have a big water feature like a lake and they have woodlands and mounds of earth with trees planted and nature's really considered. This is winter honeysuckle behind me and it smells amazing. I had to stop because there's a sudden sweet smell. It's delicious, sugary, sweet, floral. Mmm. Right. I'm going to walk through this willowy whale. I don't know if it's a whale, but oh, I can't work out what it is. Looking out for signs of beaver activity. I think we've got signs that the beavers have been over here. Look! Oh my goodness! Wait, little bits here. And that's TV marks, I think. It was so exciting to be able to really see the beaver tooth marks in the actual saplings but also I discovered that on some of the saplings that had been bitten this amazing slime mould was forming. Basically it's where the beavers have cut the bark and the sap is reacting with fungus and bacteria to create this slime mould and it will feed small worms and beetles. Here, it, the tree hasn't been gnawed, the tree has just been cut, and there's no slime mould. But here, the tree has been gnawed, you can see that it's been gnawed, and there is the slime mould. It's really having a sniff around here. She won't recognise that smell. The beavers were introduced into the island ahead that you can see at the beginning of 2023 and a few months later the female beaver gave birth to a kit so they're doing really well there but they must have swum over from that island to gnaw on the bits of trees where I'm standing. Hopefully the beaver's amazing ability to restore wetland and woodland habitats will mean that it's going to benefit a much wider array of plants and animals than traditional human management will. Fairy art started when Robin was trying out his new camera in a woodlands. He was trying to take a picture of the sunlit moss on a rock, but when he got home and looked closely at the image, he could see what looked like a fairy sitting at the top of the tree. This inspired him to begin his magnificent creations, which are all named, tell a story, and are revealed on his YouTube channel, which I will put a link to in the description of this vlog. Is it good here, Zaf, seeing the geese golf at night? It's cold. The Arctic blast is on its way. I don't know how cold it's going to get, if we're going to get frozen in again, if we're going to get snow. We're just going to have to sit and wait because we can't go forward. We can, well, we can go forward a tiny bit, but we can't go anywhere.
got to put your coat on you lady we'll try you with your coat so now i'm going to take the trolley down to a shop in barlaston to, to really stock up on wood i've got enough for the day but because i'm keeping the fire going overnight it's um i need some more so first things first can i get Seth to put her coat on you don't like your coat do you <laughs> right here we go good girl good girl good girl come here come here On you. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Tail always goes down. She doesn't like wearing it, but I'm gonna try her on it again because it is cold. You ready, Zeph? minus three today and whilst I know it's not as cold as some other places in the world the fact my home is made of steel means as soon as the fire goes out the temperature plummets inside it might be freezing today but I tell you one thing it's absolutely beautiful It makes all the difference having a towpath like this, it really does. It's, uh, it means I can take the trolley out. So we've got that, we're off Seb, ready to go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Winter from her treetop chair, while honeysuckle scents the air, dips her paintbrush thick in white, and flicks in flecks all through the night. Her landscape wakes the world below, frozen water, fields of snow, sky bereft of clouds just blue, a masterpiece for her to view. But canvas shatters at sunrise by a skein of geese screeching their cries and footsteps etching out their track. The snow is swept, the ice sheets crack. Swan shuffles up to crush each sheet, fragmented mirror once complete. Sharp shards rise like glassy sails. Blasts of arctic air exhales from winter as she sees her art tattered, trodden, torn apart. She dips her bitter brush down deep and waits for world to fall asleep.